Hello, second graders. It's time to check in with our caterpillars again. They stopped eating a few days ago, but as you can see, they look quite different. Right now, these little guys are no longer caterpillars and they're not yet butterflies, but are going through metamorphosis. They even have a new name to go along with this new stage of development. They're called pupa. That's right, they start as eggs, emerge as caterpillars, change again into this pupa you see here, and will emerge once again as a butterfly. What you're looking at right now is their hardened outer protective layer called a chrysalis. Generally speaking, butterflies and skippers form a chrysalis. Moths, on the other hand, generally make cocoons. A cocoon is something totally different. Just look at this picture, totally different. Cocoons are sort of like nests. It's a shell they make to protect themselves while they're pupa and changing into a moth. Some are made just out of the silk the caterpillar spins. Some add leaves, plant matter, or even their own hair to the silk cocoon. You know what other insects need cocoons for their pupal stage? Little ants, fleas, and wasps. But back to our little pupas and their chrysalis. What's happening inside this hardened protective shell? Well, the caterpillar parts are liquefying and rearranging to become the cells, tissues, and organs of a butterfly. Pretty soon, you'll be able to see the outline of a butterfly wing beneath the chrysalis. All right, so insect lore said in their instructions to gently remove the silk from the chrysalis before you place it inside the enclosure. I don't think this was a good idea. I fully detached the chrysalis from the cap. Then I got a little bit spooked when it started twitching. That little guy thinks I'm a predator and is trying to scare me away, but I'm not a predator. So let's just gently, very gently and somewhat slowly place it on this clean napkin in its habitat. Insect lore also informs me that the butterflies can emerge from the floor just as happily and just as safely as hanging from a cap. So it's all right in the end. It sure is switching a lot though. And do you see that bit of black hanging from the top of the chrysalis? It's not that they forgot to include a part of their body, but rather it's the last bit of exoskeleton that was shed. Just like snakes and spiders shed their skin as they grow, so do caterpillars. And that's all this little bit is. It's the last part of their shed exoskeleton. See, it's easy to think of a chrysalis as something a caterpillar makes, like a cocoon, but that isn't really true. This last time they shed their exoskeletons is not because they become a bigger caterpillar, but rather because they are changing into a pupa. So when you're watching the video of the caterpillar becoming a pupa, what you're seeing is a caterpillar shedding its exoskeleton from the bottom up, slowly revealing the hardened shell of the chrysalis underneath. And sometimes that little bit of uh, exoskeleton you can see on the top of the chrysalis just is left there hanging a little bit. And in our second cup, two chrysalis fell down all on their own, so I'll just gently move them as well to the bottom of the floor of our second enclosure. Our butterflies will spend about two weeks in this pupal stage, which is much faster than our little radish caterpillar took while in the pupal stage. That little guy took months, the winter months to be exact. Instead of being able to fly south during cold months, it takes the bear's hibernation approach and just waits out winter as a chrysalis. But our painted ladies don't need to wait as it's already spring. So I'll be sure to check in with you soon as our butterflies start to appear.